Okay, a couple more final examples. These are the more complicated type of problems that we're going to look at here. <clears throat> and uh, these will probably, again, be like the most difficult ones for sure that you would come up with. So in this one, looking again, what you should be doing is seeing if you can maybe figure out some steps on your own before we go and talk about any of the problems. So make sure you're working a step ahead, pause the video as needed. On this one, in terms of what side to use, yeah, both are pretty straightforward. There's not much of a difference <clears throat> for any one of them. Um, I'm personally going to work on the left-hand side here, I think, just because of the fact I have multiple stuff on the bottom that I can work with. Um, the only thing I've really noticed here at first is I do have cotangent squared. So I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to see, well, cotangent squared, trig identity-wise, would be uh, cosecant squared of, that's alpha, minus 1. So you have kind of an interesting formula there already. You have a couple of cosecants on the top and on the bottom. What I can also notice, though, if I have cosecant squared minus 1, technically that's a difference of squares, isn't it? I could turn that into factoring-wise, cosecant minus 1 and cosecant plus one all over this one plus cosecant of alpha. And the reason why I do that is because, well, now when I have is something that will cancel out. <clears throat> and I'm left with just the cosecant of alpha minus one. And we kind of saw something like this uh, in our last video where we might have to go and maybe multiply by something else. Or again, if all else fails, what I can look at here is the fact that, well, hey, I have a cosecant, I need things in terms of sine. If I flip cosecant, I get sine. Well, that kind of helps because that's what I want to get. So now I have two fractions to turn into one. I'm gonna make a common denominator, so this is gonna stay as one over sine. This is now going to be sine over sine when I multiply by it. So I have one minus sine of theta on top, or sine of alpha, and I have sine of alpha on the bottom. And really not even paying attention to even realize that's exactly what I was trying to get. 1 minus sine of alpha all over sine of alpha. So kind of even when I'm not even paying attention to what I need to try to find, sometimes the uh, basic algebra will just kind of work itself straight to the solution that we're trying to find. All right, last one and definitely the toughest one of all of them <clears throat> that you will see. I'm going to work on the right-hand side <coughs> of this equation. Maybe. Actually, now that I look at it, I think I'm going to change my mind. And in fact, I am because I'm going to look at the fact that using a, one of the big main identities, I know I'm going to need to get this here to eventually be uh, cotangent squared is the same as cosecant squared minus 1. Okay, so while I'm not working on the right-hand side, I'm just kind of keeping that in mind. And if I could get that on the bottom, I'd be in pretty good shape. Well, what I noticed here, though, is technically I have almost half of it. If I had 1 plus cosecant, I would get a difference of squares that looked very similar to that. So that's how I'm going to start is by multiplying by 1 plus cosecant, sorry, of beta on top and bottom. <clears throat> so when I do that, I'd have to foil on top. I would have sine of beta for the first, then the outside, then the inside, and then last. All over on the bottom, I'm going to need to foil that out, it looks like, so I'll do that first. Outer, inner, and last would be cosecant squared. <clears throat> so now let's try to simplify some of this. Cosecant of beta, <clears throat> it's the only thing I'm really going to change there in that numerator right now, because cosecant is 1 over sine of beta. I'm going to keep everything else on top the same. By denominator, just for time being, I'm going to keep it all the same. You may have noticed there's a couple things that I can cancel out. We'll get to that here in one second. <clears throat> because I can do the same thing right here. The signs are going to cancel, and I'm left with just one. Really, I should probably do it in two steps, but I have minus one and plus one. Those are just going to cancel each other out. I'll be left with sine beta on top minus cosecant beta all on top. And here on the bottom, those two, minus cosecant plus cosecant, also cancel. One minus cosecant squared beta is on the bottom. <clears throat> well, like we said, one minus cosecant is pretty close to what we wanted our answer to be. It's not quite there. It's actually just backwards. Well, here's what can happen. 
<clears throat> if I multiplied this denominator by negative 1, the signs would flip. I'd have negative 1 and positive 2 secant squared. I would have exactly what I'm looking for. I'm allowed to do that as long as I do it to both top and bottom. So my numerator now would be, uh, give me positive cosecant and negative sine. My denominator would be flipped around as well, positive cosecant squared and minus one. <clears throat> well, that's good because my denominator, we said that's exactly what I wanted to look for, cosecant squared minus one is equal to cotangent. My numerator, cosecant beta minus sine of beta, and that's exactly what we were looking for. That's how we were trying to prove what we had. So the main thing here is looking at the fact that you had to <clears throat> multiply a top and bottom by negative one to get your signs to match up to be able to use those Pythagorean identities that you wanted.